Hey everyone, Tyrem here, bringing you a solo cell phone guide for the masters. I'll talk about why it is good, why it is maybe not so good, what scarabs I take, the Atlas Passive Tree, and much more. So guys, here's the thing. In solo cell phone, sometimes I am just curious. Sometimes I just want to try something. There is no pressure, I don't need to make currency, I'm in solo cell phone. Might as well mess around with the atlas tree and this time I wanted to farm as many masters as possible in every single map. Preferably all of them. So the question is, is that possible? And the answer is yes, absolutely it is possible. And I'm going to show you exactly how in this video. Then you may ask yourself, is it good? I mean, define good, but nah, I mean not really, it's not really good but it is fun i think and it has its uses for sure plus there is something weirdly satisfying about completing four master missions and see all those quests completed at the end of the map and while i'm not going to sugarcoat this we are sacrificing some very good nose on the atlas tree to pull this one off this strategy turned out to be less of a meme than i thought it would be much to my own surprise there is value in this strategy, and you're about to find out why. The strategy doesn't have any prerequisites. It is low investment, you don't need a great build, and you can simply run this. There are tons of scarabs that fit into this Atlas Passive tree, so you will have very few dependencies on scarabs. How this strategy works is that I did some smart-ish investment in all of the masters. They all have a 100% chance to spawn in the map, so they are all four in every single map without needing a scarab. And then I'm taking nodes that reap the most benefits. We're skipping some nodes as well because not all master nodes are worth it or worth traveling to. Using the strategy, you'll get a lot of different fun master mechanics and plenty of special loot you otherwise wouldn't be able to get. Let's break down what the four masters are rewarding you in Solo Cell Found. John, the betrayal mechanic, provides plenty of scarabs in the safe houses you run, plus specific uniques like the Paradoxica, which also drops from those safe houses, plus tons of veiled gear, which in solo cell phones can be crafted into amazing items, plus the Katarina boss fights, who drop very interesting uniques once again. She drops the veiled orbs exclusively and again provides access to all of those safe house rooms, leading to again more scarabs, maps, and other loot. Nico, that is Delve, provides buffs inside of the map, making us tankier, doing more damage and making us faster. He also provides raw azurite, which can be traded for Delve crafting materials, assuming you know how that works. I hardly ever use it in Solo Cell Found, it is something I must delve into someday to get a good understanding of it. And of course you will get Sulfite, which is used to do the Delve mechanic. I mostly use that to level ults. I feel Delve is very good for leveling from 68 to basically all the way to 100 if you want. Up next, Alva with the Incursion Temples. It adds a bunch of monsters to the maps. It allows you to build Incursion Temples and by running those temples you get exclusive access to tools to double corrupt your gems or gear. I made a whole tutorial explaining Incursion last week, which is mostly still viable, so check that out in the card and the description. Incursion also offers specific uniques that are pretty cool, I feel. Those uniques can be upgraded using the vials that drop from the last temple boss, which is a neat mechanic. Plus, some of the items that drop with Incursion mods are surprisingly viable in Solar Cell Found. I crafted this minion wand, for example, from a random Incursion drop. Lastly, we have Einhar, everyone's favorite NPC. Einhar provides a bunch of beasts mostly, which don't drop all that much loot in the maps, but are mostly used in beast crafting in the bestiary. And in Solo Cell Found, that is an easy to use and fun crafting mechanic in my opinion. You can spam a bunch of uniques, hoping to get lucky, or target specific crafts, like removing a suffix and adding a prefix. It's quite useful. Or go fight the bestiary bosses and loot their uniques, providing special aspects that are build enabling by itself. Once again, it's fun in Solar Cell Found, and maybe you'll even end up crafting a build around some of these items. I might do that myself, in fact. Let's talk about the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, this strategy works with tons of different scarabs, making it very versatile. You can put in scarabs for all four masters, after all. I wouldn't put in strongbox scarabs, by the way, that is not worth it, in my opinion. 
my next strategy will likely be around strong boxes, so save those scarabs for that video. Two, you are getting incursion temples, field items, field orbs, rare uniques from bestiary bosses, loads of sulfite and much more, all in just a few maps. Most of these rewards you can't get from anywhere else, so it's a very efficient tree in that regard. 3. It's rather versatile, as you are running incursion temples in between, you're doing some beast crafting, maybe some delve, you're running a safe house or you're killing Katarina. And 4. You don't need a good build to run this. Everything is super manageable and there aren't juiced up maps or monsters involved with this strategy. There are cons too, however. One. Maps tend to take a while with 4 masters in there. I am on average with the build you see on the screen, which is cast on crit, dead and a dead, taking roughly 8 minutes or so to clear a map. 2. Another con are the good atlas nodes you must sacrifice for this strategy. That means typically less loot compared to other strategies, a bit less scarabs, less currency, less maps. But you are still easily sustaining maps, it's just a trade off for the master loot you are getting instead. For Scarabs, you have tons of options really. Starting with Betrayal, the Scarab of Intelligence is great for getting to Katarina boss fights faster. The Reinforcements is good for field items. And the Perpetuation counts for still quite a few additional Scarabs. It is not uncommon to have 7 or so Betrayal members in your maps after all, so that is 7 Scarabs. For Incursion, you use either the Scarab of Invasion to add monsters to the Incursions or the Scarab of Champions to make the entire Incursion magic monsters. That is mostly good for experience. It's not all that noticeable for better loot. The Incursion Scarab of Timelines I have not tested yet, but I'm going to dedicate a video to that Scarab. It looks incredibly promising, I'm just farming up a few more. For Bestiary, the Scarab of the Herd is amazing for more beasts. Red beasts provide the special crafts in beast crafting, so more of those is always good. The Duplicating Scarab is solid as well, generating tons of beasts for beast crafting. It doesn't duplicate the beasts inside of the map, but each beast captured is duplicated in terms of beast crafting. The Shadowed Crow Scarab I did not use, that will also likely be its own video. The Nico Scarabs are not all that impressive, I found. More sulfite, using the greed scarab is typically not needed unless you focus on delving. The scarab of fumes is an option and 500% quantity sounds like a lot, but I ran a few maps with this and didn't notice much difference. It's hard to tell which monsters are impacted to begin with as you still kill them straight away, so I'm having difficulty properly assessing if this scarab is any good. If you know more, put it in the comments, feel free. Let's talk about the Atlas passive tree and the choices I made. Starting with Jun. I'm taking all the nodes that make her appear in maps. I am doing this in fact for every master. In total it adds up to 100% so she is in every map. Bribery provides a lot more field items. Effective leadership does the same thing. Pillage and plunder is a little bit dangerous as the items from syndicate members do make them rather strong but I'm still taking this node. I'm pathing here anyway. You could skip it if you prefer. Test of Loyalty is a mandatory note giving every execution 2 levels to a member. Even if you don't know how betrayal works, you just put in as many level 3 members in any of the safe houses, kill Katarina and have a field day in the zone afterwards. You don't need to understand betrayal for this to work. Just execute as many of those guys as you can, give them levels, imprison a few for the Katarina intelligence and go ham. The only node we are not taking is Intelligence Gathering. You're getting so much intelligence from joining your maps, plus the Scarabs, that this is just overkill. Plus, it's a lot of investment pathing over there, so I'm skipping it. Then Delve or Nico. Once again, he always appears in the maps. Packed with Energy is simply an amazing node. This is pretty much mandatory in any Atlas passive tree. Guarded Hordes provides more Sulfite and more monsters. The Price of Progress contains Doomed Spirits for the Sulfite which sometimes spawns a strongbox or a lesser shrine. The strongboxes synergize well with our strongbox nodes, making this worth it. And you're pathing here anyway, because you need the 100% Nico spawn chance. Mining byproducts provides azurite. If this triggers the 10%, with all of the other major atlas nodes, you get between 2 or 3k azurite. That's really not bad. You can trade the azurite with Nico for delve crafting materials or upgrades for delve. I'm skipping Sulfite Infusion because I just don't need Sulfite. Up next, Alva with her incursion. 
Mandatory nodes are resource reallocation and contested development. This makes sure your incursion temples have many more tier 3 rooms. Artifacts of the Vaal is mandatory as well, spawning 4 alvas in one map. Then it becomes rather debatable, but I enjoy a meme mechanic or two, starting with the cursed treasures from Treasure Hunt. These are the purple chests in the incursions. It's not easy to tell what they drop exactly and how much you benefit from this. According to the wiki, it will reduce your time in incursions by 8 seconds, but also adds some random items such as currency and scarabs to your drops upon completing the incursion. I would say this is actually worth it. To counter the lost time, I'm taking time dilation, which gives you plenty of time to click all of the cursed treasures. I've had over 7 of these spawn in one incursion, eating away a minute of my time. And then I found my buddy QDoc underscore so nice to explain the Vile Flesh Merchant from Vile Oligarchs. A, a Flesh Merchant is a unique wraith that always spawns inside incursions. Encounters when the outskill whale uh, oligarchs is allocated. Slaying it will drop will drop a few stacks of currency. Typically, orbs of transmutations. Well, I mean, typically means like, yeah, like, well, I mean, untypically though, like you could, you could get a mirror. Like Do you guys need any more convincing? We are clearly taking this. Who doesn't want the mirror in solo cell found, right? Finally, we have Einhar. Mighty Hunter is fun and it costs you one Atlas passive point. Easy decision, I think. Big game is great. That's a good number of additional red beasts. I'm skipping Deadly Prey because Bestial Rage doesn't synergize with anything. If you want some interesting synergy for this one, check out my Iron Harvest Atlas strategy. You don't want this node here though, because it can take ages to kill all the beasts without really any gains. We're also skipping all the nodes that target farm specific beasts. Feel free to take those if you're looking for specific beasts, but I am not. Too hard at hunt is just overall nice for beast crafting. And the modifiers tend to make the beast drop more loot, I think. I'm not 100% sure on this, however. Typically, added modifiers to monsters also crank up their quantity and rarity. This is really hard to test, however. Apart from the master nodes, I'm taking strong boxes, mainly because that enables us to run ambush on the map device. Without something like strong boxes, there's no synergy whatsoever on the map device, which I feel is a waste, so I took strong boxes. We're already pathing here, the strong boxes are good and fun, I feel. I'm taking a few scarab notables, but not many, and to finish the tree, I'm still sticking to Searing Exarch. You don't have enough points to run either of worlds, I feel. The Master's Atlas strategy would synergize fairly well with Maven, but you would give up a lot of points to travel there. I tried and tested it, but wasn't happy with the results. So, it is good old Searing Exarch. You can't go wrong with Exarch in SSF. The All Flames are nothing special. We're not dropping many All Flames, as we have zero investment in any of the League Mechanic nodes. We just don't have the Atlas points for this. I'm ending the video with a few pro tips. 1. Pay close attention to all the masters. It's very easy to forget an alpha amidst all of the master mayhem going on. And forgetting an alpha is just not an option. You don't want to backtrack either, so pay close attention to particularly alpha. And 2. If you dislike a specific master, you can simply refund the notes from that master, use that for something else you do enjoy, and turn this tree into a plug and play atlas tree. I just took almost every single master node, but in the process I'm sacrificing plenty of good scarab nodes, leak mechanic nodes, shrines and other stuff like quantity. If you don't want to farm beasts, for example, you can spend all those Einhar Atlas passive points on the Atlas nodes I am skimping out on, which will likely result in a much better and balanced tree. So take advantage of that option and don't blindly copy paste this tree unless you're as dumb as me and want to farm every single master in every single map. I applaud you, I enjoy it, it's fun to me, but what is fun to me may not be fun to you. That being said though, I hope you try out the strategy. Let me know what you think, also let me know if you have any suggestions for this. Subscribe and like for more ARPG guides and random Atlas passive trees. And guys, I just wanted to also mention that I really appreciate the support over these videos. A lot of people are tuning in and you're all commenting and liking this video. I've gained a ton of subscribers for this, so really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, making it to the end. Love you all. See you soon. Bye bye.